Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Welcome to another episode of Arise. Thank you so much for joining me. I am always feel so blessed to have you guys on this channel with me and on this journey with me for us to be on this journey together, learning about our faith and just life in general, I guess. I'm grateful for all of you. I prayed a lot about what to talk about this week. And normally I have something really strong on my heart each week. And this week I didn't. And um, I was going to talk about judgment and being judgmental and what the Bible says about that. But I just didn't feel like, I don't know. I just wasn't prepared for that just yet. And so I, I came to Granger last night and I said, I just, I don't really have anything for this week. And he said, he sat me down and he gave me something. So thankfully God placed it on his heart to give to me so I can give it to you. So what he basically said was that sometimes we have to do a refresher. I don't know what is falling down from the sky. I don't know if it's rain or dust or something. Um, so what he said was we have to sometimes get a refresher and get back to basics. And so he gave me the scripture in 1 Corinthians 3, 2, when Paul addresses the people of Corinth, he says, brothers and sisters, I could not address you as people who live by the spirit, but as people who are still worldly, mere infants in Christ. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you are not ready for it. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly. So he reminded me that, you know, I feel like I'm on this journey with you guys and we're like on this progressive journey in our faith and we are, but Sometimes we all, have, we all have to be brought back to basics. And there are new people who join this channel every week who may be brand new in their faith, who maybe have never opened a Bible before, who maybe have so many questions like I used to, who maybe don't know what they believe, who maybe have never stepped foot in a church, or who may have been hurt by the church and don't know if they want to believe anymore, or who, or who have been hurt by the world and don't trust God anymore. So we are all in different places on our walk. So. I thought we could get back to basics today, if you guys will bear with me and just basically start at the beginning and give you guys a little bit about what this book is all about. If you have so many questions, like I have so many questions. I just realized there's so much fluff back there. Right there, our dogs chewed up a chew toy, so there's lots of fluff in my yard. Okay, I'm gonna start us off with a prayer and then we will get started. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for our time together today. Lord, I thank you in this time, um, in this world that we have, that there is technology that we can gather together from anywhere that we are all across the world and praise you and glorify you and seek you every day. I know that we are all on different walks in life with you, God, and I know that you know everyone's heart who is listening or watching, God. I pray that your Holy Spirit is here today and that your word comes through me, God, not my word, but yours. We're so grateful to you. We're grateful for your son. We're grateful for all of the blessings in our lives, God. And I just pray that we can all be a little bit more like Christ every single day. Thank you for this time together. Please bless it with your word. It's in your name we pray. Amen. All right, let's get started and get back to basics. So I wanted to see if I could just kind of get back to the start with you. I mean, what is this book about? Who is God? Who is Jesus? I know so many of you already know this answer, but a lot of people may not. And a lot of people, this may be your first arise. If this is your first arise, welcome. Uh, I am not a theologian. I am not a scholar. I am just a mama and a wife and a sister and a daughter who has grown in her faith journey over the past 39 years. I didn't come to know Christ until I was in my 30s. It took a lot of ups and downs, a lot of mistakes, a lot of being lost, um, a lot of not knowing what I believed anymore, a lot of studying in college, getting married, having babies, going through tragedy of my own, and really experiencing and feeling God move in my life, along with people planting seeds for me along the way that slowly have started to blossom and bloom. and. Now there's no turning back for me. And so I hope that all of you, if you're not there, can get there. I hope that my Arise, my main goal in doing this Arise is just for you to want to know more about Christ, to want to know more about 
his love for you and to want to seek him. That is my main goal with this Arise. I'm not always gonna be exactly correct. I mean, I'm sure some of you are so much more well-versed in scripture than I am. I all, I, all I can say is what's on my heart and what the Lord is leading me to say. So with that, I wanted to kind of just, like I said, get back to basics and, and, and see, you know, what is this book all about? So this book is 66 books in the Bible written by about 40 authors, and it spans over thousands of years. And this book is beautiful. This book is tragic. This book is at times terrifying. Uh, but mostly this book is so hopeful and so full of redemption, which I think is the most important thing in this whole entire book. And this is God's love letter to us. This is God's gift to us. And it's never too late to seek it. It's never too late to find it. Like I said, I was in my 30s when I came to know Christ and when I finally opened this book and started reading. And then it started to become illuminated for me when I accepted Jesus Christ as our savior. So um, I'm going to try my best to summarize this book. There, like I said, there are 66 books. There's no way that I could touch on every single thing that's in this book. So please, uh, I'm gonna invite you to read it at the end. Uh, I'm gonna tell you to start in the Gospels, start in the book of Matthew. If you are new to this, if you've never opened up your Bible, if you start in the Old Testament, it can get a little dicey, it can get a little scary, it can kind of be like, what am I reading? But start in Matthew, start in the Gospels, read through the New Testament, and then go back and read the Old. So, where do we start? We start in the book of Genesis in creation. And God created the heavens and the earth, and he said that it was good. He created, sorry, Luna's digging. Go, baby. Go. We start in the book of Genesis. We start with the creation. We start with God creating the universe, the heavens and the earth. God then created Adam and Eve, the first man and woman, and they disobeyed God. He told them not to eat from one of the trees that was in the garden. They disobeyed God. They were deceived by the enemy. They ate from that tree, and for their disobedience, they were separated from God, and we say that that is called the fall. But because God loves us so much and he wanted to restore mankind and he decided that he wants to save what was lost and bring us back into relationship with him. So the majority of the Old Testament is God dealing with people, God dealing with people who disobeyed him, who turned away from him, um, Israel, who, who rebelled against him, who worshiped other gods and who did detestable acts. He was preparing this whole time to send his son to come in the flesh he, God became flesh, came into the earth, and he sent prophets to tell these people, you know, you have to repent, or this is gonna happen, this is gonna happen, like, God is not going to put up with all of these things, but people still didn't wanna listen. So he decided to send what we needed most, and that is a savior, and that is Jesus the Messiah. By the end of the Old Testament, people are still rejecting God. The start of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, this is their first-hand accounts of Jesus, our Messiah, our Savior. And this all explains Jesus' ministry, and the Lord sent His Son to be born of a virgin, and He would be our Savior. He would be our Messiah. He sent His Son so that His purposes would be fulfilled, so that we could be saved, we could be redeemed, and the earth and the heavens would be restored to what God had wanted them to be in the beginning of creation. So God became flesh. God became flesh in the form of a baby, born to a virgin, in a barn, manger, and then the Gospels start the life of Jesus. And John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That's one of the big scriptures in the Bible. That is one of the, main, the, one of the most important things. That for God so loved the world, even when we were sinning against him, even when we were committing bad terrible acts whenever we were disobeying God and turning away from him and worshiping other people, worshiping other idols. He sent his son to save us, to pay the debt that we owe for our sins. Jesus was perfect and blameless and sinless, and he died a death on the cross for you and for me that we deserve. The death on the cross is fulfilling God's redemptive plan. And anytime I ever think of suffering in this world, I go back to the cross and 
He died a horrible death for us because of our sins. And I, I think, you know, that love to give his life for us is the greatest love of all. He did rise again on the third day. And I mean, I, I think the whole realm of Christianity lies in that one point that Jesus was resurrected. And it fulfilled all the prophecies in the Old Testament and the New. And he revealed himself not only to, to women, but to prophets, to disciples, to 500 other people. You know, people always say, well, how do we know this is true? How do we know that the Bible is true? The Bible is full of, it's not just stories. This is not just fairy tales. These are eyewitness accounts of people who walked with God, people who, who had visions from God, who were visited by God, who walked with Jesus, who witnessed all of his miracles, who witnessed his death, and who witnessed for the, for the most important thing is his resurrection. They witnessed him coming back to life, being raised from the dead. They witnessed, these are eyewitness accounts. This is not just made up stuff. And you know, I used to ask the same question, well, how do we know it's true? And how do you know it's not just written by men? It's translated by men, but, but these are true accounts of what happened over thousands of years. And you know, some people say these people either have to be completely crazy, over 500 people have to be completely mad, completely crazy, or it's true. And I believe it's true. So the rest of the New Testament explains um, how Jesus established his church, how you know the church is considered the bride, and how we're how we're to live. You know, the New Testament, all the epistles, and 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 Paul writes all these letters, and th that, those are some of my favorite books in the Bible. So after you read the Gospels, go into the epistles, like Ephesians, Corinthians, and and those books that come after the Gospels, and it, it answers so many questions that so many of us have about life and about Jesus and about God and about how we're supposed to live and how we're supposed to handle situations, the answers are in this book. It reveals to us how to live our lives. It reveals to us that we are supposed to share the good news. Whenever we hear this, we are supposed to not just keep it to ourselves, but we are supposed to share it. And we are supposed to help to bring other people to heaven too. We are called to make disciples out of the nations. Some of the best nuggets and, and probably two of the best commandments um, that Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul and all your strength and love your neighbor as yourself. There's no greater commandment than these. There are so many commandments in the Bible, but two of those are the most important ones. Love the Lord your God above all else and love our neighbor as ourself. The last book, um, the book of Revelation, written by John is, he reveals how Jesus is to return for the second coming and he comes for his people, he comes for his bride, he comes for those who, who believe and he removes everything else that stands in the way, uh, every, everyone and everything who doesn't believe, who, who is getting in the way of his people and his church to be reunited in communion with Jesus and our Lord. And those who remain loyal will be delivered from their enemies and Satan will finally be destroyed and the new heaven and the new earth will be redeemed and restored and there will be no more tears, no more sadness, no more death, no more sickness. We will be restored on the new earth as it was supposed to be in the beginning of creation in Genesis. That was what, a five, six, seven, eight minute synopsis of the Bible. Uh, there's so much more in this book, you guys. But in a nutshell, God created the universe. God created mankind. We rebelled against him. He loved us so much that he sent his son to die for us. He died a death that we should all die. He sent a savior for all of us to be saved so that we could, we would no longer have to be separated from God. And all we're called to do is trust the Lord with all our heart, love each other, believe in Jesus, repent from our sins, turn away from sin and pick up our cross and follow, follow him, follow the Lord. And to me, that doesn't seem like so much to ask for, for someone to, to die to themselves every day, to, to give their life up for Christ because he gave his life up for us. And, and everything in this book, you know, there are lots of laws and commandments and it's not meant to hinder us. It's meant so that we could all live the best life that we could possibly live. God loves us and he wants us to live a life away from sin, live a life of joy and fulfillment and peace and rest and love and only he is the one that can give us that. This world will not give us that. That seems like a pretty good deal to me. Jesus died a, a terrible death that we deserve. And if I turn to him and if I believe in him and if I trust him and if I worship him 
And if I turn away from sin and live for the Lord and die to myself every day, I get to be forgiven of my sins. I get to have a fulfilling life of peace, even through suffering. I get to live forever with my loved ones in heaven and the new earth. I get to live with my Savior who gave his life for me. And I think that's a pretty good deal. I get to have the same power in me that rose Jesus from the grave. That lives in us. Whenever we accept Jesus as our Savior, that lives in us. We get to have that same power. And in the end, we will all be restored. And all it takes is just a few simple things that we are called to do. The Bible does not sugarcoat it. The Bible does not say that once you follow Christ, your life will be easy. It is not easy. It is hard. We will be mocked. We will be judged. We will be rejected just as Jesus was. We will suffer. We will suffer in this life. And the Bible says that. But the suffering is nothing compared to the glory that is to come. Everything, nothing that we face in this life can compare to the redemptive glory that we will all feel when the new earth and heavens, when the heaven and the new earth are restored and we are back in communion with our Lord and Savior. The road is narrow and, and few will find it. I am just on a mission to try to plant seeds for other people. It's not my doing, you know, I can't give you guys faith. This is a gift from God and God is wanting to reveal himself to you. And all I can do is hopefully plant a seed that might make you want to seek him, might, might make you want to desire to know more about him because I want all of you on that narrow path. You know, the, the road is wide that leads to destruction and few will find the narrow road that lead to everlasting life. And I want you guys to be on that road. God loves you so much and Jesus paid the price for you. He paid the debt for you. He wants to restore what has been broken and lost. So will you trust him? Will you open this book? Will you devote time every day to get to know him, to learn more about him if you have questions, to find out what it is that I'm talking about, what everybody else is talking about, what everybody else has maybe felt that maybe you haven't felt yet? Do you want to seek him? Do you want to know him? I wasn't planning on doing a, a call to Christ, but I just felt the need that I need to do that right now. Um, I'm sorry my dogs might be barking through it, but if you are feeling lost, if you are feeling broken, if you are feeling like you want to start fresh, if you want to be forgiven, if you want to start living your life for the Lord, I invite you to say this prayer with me. We do this on a couple of arises and I just felt the Lord pulling me to do it right now, so I'm going to obey. If you will just say this prayer with me, bow your heads and say this prayer. Lord Jesus, I want to know you. God, I want to turn away from any sin in my life, Lord. Please forgive me of my sins. I need restoration. I need redemption. I need your grace. I need your forgiveness. I believe that you are the Son of God and that you paid the price for me, dying on the cross so that I could have everlasting life. I want to follow you from this day forward. I want to pick up my cross and seek you every day, trusting in you, living for you, and never turning back. I thank you for your gift, God. Help me to seek you every day. It's in your precious name I pray, amen. hope some of you said the prayer. I always love to read your comments. If you guys say that, uh, comment down below and welcome to the start of a new journey. Welcome to, to the start of a new life <laughs> of being forgiven, of being so loved. And God wants to restore you. He wants to redeem everything broken in your past and your present and your future that is to come. If we just trust in him. So 1 Peter 2.2 says, Like newborn babies, crave spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. The word is here to guide us, to transform us. And we have to become like newborn babies. We have to crave this spiritual milk every day to get us through this life. It is not only meant to bring us closer to Christ, but it is meant to make us to live more like Christ every day. And to 
help us to flourish and to grow and to become the person that God has meant us to be and to plant seeds for the next generation of, of children, of people who will grow up in this world. And as many of you know, it is a crazy time. It is a crazy world. Satan rules this earth and we are called to make disciples out of people. We are called to share the good news so that we can we can keep our we can train our children up as it says in Proverbs, train our children up so that they might not depart and follow follow Christ and live the best life that they can live for our savior for what he gave for us. I hope that covered some of the basics for you guys. Like I said, I can't cover the whole Bible in 10 minutes. Um, another uh, app that's really good or on YouTube is called The Bible Project. It is amazing at explaining every book in the Bible, at drawing out pictures. So sometimes I'll read a scripture and then I'll go and I'll watch The Bible Project and, and see things explained. And I read different versions of the Bible to, there's different translations, so I read different versions to see what different things mean, and I just compare, and I just try to fill my fill my mind with all the spiritual milk that I can. So I encourage you to do the same. I just love you guys, and you're chosen, and I appreciate all of you coming back each week and dealing with my dogs barking <laughs> all the time. I hope you go into the week seeking our Lord and just praising Him and worshiping Him for all that He gave up, to, all that He gave up for you. Have a wonderful week. You're chosen, and I will see you next time. I also wanted to say, in my older rises, I used to do uh, some hair tutorials and makeup tutorials. I haven't done that in a while. I did one today, so men, boys, if y'all wanna leave, if you don't care about seeing a hair tutorial, you can just stop it now. And if you want to keep watching, keep watching. I just do a little mermaid wave tutorial at the end of this. So I will see you next week. Have a great week, plant some seeds, and know that you are loved and you are chosen. And. That's it. Have a great week. Love you. Bye. I have not done a hair tutorial on my Arise in quite a while. I used to do little makeup and hair tutorials at the end of my Arise, so I thought I would just film one today. So today I'm going to kind of do just like a mermaid beach wave, I guess you could say. I'm going to be using two different products and I'm going to alternate between each one. So I'm going to be using just the Conair Infinity, I think this is a one and a half curling iron, and then um, this is, I don't even know what the brand this is, but it's just the three waver. I know there's like that Bondi Boost that they have. Um, I got this on Amazon. Got both these on Amazon for super cheap. So I'm gonna alternate my curls and then I'll show you guys what that looks like. So you're just gonna start. I don't have anything in my hair right now. I just um, let my hair air dry last night in the shower, after the shower. So you're just gonna alternate one and one. So you'll do one curl away from your face and you'll take this guy. And that gives it kind of two different waves and then I'll brush it out at the end and show you guys what it looks like. my fingers through it and that just gives it a little bit of a different look it's not so curled it's not so perfect it's kind of messy and so it just gives it like a little bit of texture kind of messy and undone and then I'll take some texture spray this is the Moroccan oil texture spray and if you want more volume I do a little bit at the roots and just kind of y'all like that let me know what you want to see next if you want to see any more hair and makeup tutorials I kind of stopped doing those and just kind of was talking about our Lord and Jesus and scripture but I think these are kind of fun so if you guys like those let me know and I will do what you want to see next I'll see you next time bye